when we look at the whole uh, case scenario of the crucifixion, we see that Jesus himself was falsely accused. Just out trying to do the right thing, trying to live right, trying to fulfill the mandate of his father, the word of God says that those rulers, those leaders tried to find fault in him, but they could not find any fault in him. As a matter of fact, the word of God says in Old Testament scripture, I believe in Isaiah, it says that he would be numbered among transgressors. And that's because of the mean-spiritedness of man. Now, if you want to know, you know, you know that, that if you want to know man, men can be real mean-spirited and real evil when it comes to them believing they're doing what is right in their own eyesight. Here these great leaders, Pharisees, could find no fault in the man, tried to find it, but could not find fault in him. Nevertheless, they crucified him. But not only that, the word of God says that there were two other men that were robbers. They had committed crimes that were unjust. So therefore, they were brought before leaders as well. And of course, the word of God tells us that they were crucified as well. And this crucifixion took a few days, it took a few days for them to die. And the, the Roman government would take other types of measures uh, so that they could die a little quicker. Sometimes they would break their leg. And of course the piercing with the nails would cause them to lose blood quicker. And then of course eventually they would suffocate. And so these two men are hanging there on the cross with the Savior. It's amazing, even up until death sometimes, people, do, they really do not recognize the Christ or the Christo, the anointed one. He's there to help us if we are willing to accept his help. So the word of God said that while he's hanging there, there's a crowd down on the ground that mocks Jesus and make these little remarks to Jesus. But isn't it amazing how his humanity feels one thing and his divinity know another thing? So he was human and divine. In his human man, he feels the excruciating pain of the cross, but in his divinity, he know the truth about why he is there. So he's there on the cross along with those two male factors, those individuals on the ground. It's amazing how sometimes people start saying things and it get into the spirit of others. You know how it is when you talk negative. You know how it is when you spread gossip. gossip. You know how it is when you say bad things about other people. Sometimes it has a tendency to keep on growing. And, and sometimes, you know, we talk about spirits being able to be transferred, how that your spirit transferred into somebody else. I keep saying everybody ought to have their own spiritual identity and individuality so that when people come to you, you won't have to feed into what they're saying. You really don't have to talk about what they talk about. If you're bold enough to tell them, I choose not to talk about that. And if you don't, you know, if, if you want to keep that friendship, then you've got to be real. You know, friends must understand one thing. You've got to be real. You can't fake this. You've got to be real. So somehow, isn't it amazing how this male factor, one of them, he's on the cross. Here he's dying and doesn't have enough sense, if you will, to repent. What he does, he joins the crowd and he starts making remarks about the Christ that is dying on the cross. But aren't you glad that he stopped dying long enough to have a conversation with two thieves on the cross? He just stopped dying a little bit long enough to start a conversation with those men on the cross. But notice very carefully, the one that started criticizing, Jesus stayed right there and did not dignify his remarks that he made. Aren't you glad that he doesn't always strike back like we strike back? While he was there on the cross, he had the authority. He could have called 10,000 angels to come see about him, but he knew you and I had to repent 
of what we were doing wrong. So the word of God says that this one began to say, if you're the Christ, come on down off the cross and save us. No response. But the second male factor I had remarks to Christ, and Christ responded. There comes a time when you do not have to dignify any remarks when people are talking nonsense and foolishness. You just don't have to. When they say whatever they want to say about you, don't waste your time trying to dignify uh, the remarks or trying to even justify. Jesus could have easily said, I am the Christ, just watch me. You're laughing now, but I get the last laugh. He could have said that, but because he's humble and because he is a savior, because he is the kind of God we need, he stayed right there and did not entertain what he had to say. Young people, sometimes you can't always, you know, mouth back when somebody else says something about you. As long as you know who you are, you take your stand. You don't always have to fuss and fight. You don't have to physically fight. You don't have to get in quarrels with anybody. The Word of God says that other male factor said to Jesus, listen, he says to him, listen very, very carefully. He says, Jesus first, and then he said, Lord, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Let me just talk just for a moment. Let me give contrast of the two. Are you with me? Are you with me? The contrast is one mocked Christ demonstrating lack of reasoning. The other demonstrated a high type of intelligence. How did he do that? In several ways. First, he feared God. You've got to fear the Lord. Because the word of God says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You've got, that. You've got to fear the Lord. When you're doing your stuff and your little dirty works, you've really got to fear the Lord. But I believe that if you stay there long enough, you do become hardened to it. And you don't even recognize your own wrong. The one that mocked the Lord didn't really understand what he was doing. And he'd become so hardened in his dealings that when it came time and when he had a chance to repent, he didn't even have enough sense to repent. Two, he rebuked another that was not fearing God. Remember the word of God says, he says to him while he's mocking, if you would just let me paraphrase, what's up with you? Don't you have enough sense to know that we're dying? Don't you have enough sense to know that you're getting ready to die in just a few hours? Don't you have enough sense to know that you're making remarks and you don't even understand what you're talking about? And as a matter of fact, this man that's being crucified, he did nothing. He did nothing wrong, but you and I, you and I, he confessed his sins right there on the cross. You and I deserve what we get. Because we kept on doing our own thing the way we wanted to do it, you know, until we got caught in our wrong. And then when we got caught in our wrong, now we understand we need mercy and grace on our side. And don't you understand that grace and mercy is right here and you're criticizing grace and mercy? Ah, you're criticizing the saints because they love God and you have a problem with God. And we invite you to come on and get to know God so you won't have a problem with all of us that do love God. And then you will walk with God and understand why we love God the way we love God. Lord have mercy. Oh God, I don't know, I've got this little body language these days. Lord have mercy. So he rebuked another. You've got to rebuke people sometimes. Tell them that's not right. Tell them they're saying the wrong things. Tell them to hush. Okay. Three, he acknowledged his own condemnation and helpless state. He understood there is not a thing I could do. I can't do anything right now. I'm in a helpless state. I need a savior. Four, he acknowledged justice for crimes committed. He knew the difference in the two. He knew when people were innocent. He knew Christ was innocent, even though they tried to find. 
And then he tried to he tried to get the men to see that it's religious jealousy sometimes that gets us. Listen, don't you know you're your own in God? You don't have to be like anybody else. You don't have to look like anybody else. You don't have to act like anybody. Be yourself in God. And then you won't have to be jealous of anybody else. As a matter of fact, you know, you can have just as much as the next person. Just get in the right place in God so you can get it. Religious jealousy and malice 